Hello friends, in today's video, we shall discuss Cope-Douglas production function. An empirical production function shows a production function estimated using actual firm level data. One such empirical production function is a Cope-Douglas production function. The Cope-Douglas production function was put forward by mathematician Charles Cope and economist Paul Douglas based on an empirical study of the American manufacturing industry. Now they used this production function to consider the relative importance of the two input factors that is labor and physical capital in the manufacturing output in USA over the period 1899 to 1922 that is for a period of 23 years. Cope-Douglas production function is a linear homogeneous production function of degree 1 which implies constant returns to scale. It means if all the factors are increased in the same proportion in the long run then the total output will also increase in the same proportion. The general form of a Cope-Douglas production function can be represented as Q is equal to AL alpha K beta. Now this can also be written as A K alpha alpha L beta. Here Q represents the total output or total production. L is the labor. K is the capital. A represents the available technology or the total factor productivity. Alpha and beta are the output elasticities of labor and capital and the values of alpha and beta will always be greater than zero which is by A alpha and beta are positive constants. That is if we take into account two firms then Alpha and beta values will be different for both the firms but in absolute sense the values of alpha and beta will be constant for each of the firm. Say for example for firm 1 if the value of alpha is 0.2 and the value of beta is 0.5 then these values will be constant for firm 1 whereas for another firm say firm 2 the value of alpha will be 0.5 and the value of beta will be 0.9. So here the values of alpha and beta is differing for firm 1 and 2 but for firm 1 these values will be constant and for firm 2 these values will be constant in its absolute sense. And here this beta can be written as 1 minus alpha. So the Cope-Douglas production function can also be written as Q is equal to AL alpha K raised to 1 minus alpha. That is instead of beta we can write 1 minus alpha. So in short the Cope-Douglas production function shows that the total output or the total production depends directly on labor and physical capital and part of the output output is produced through change in technology. Now let's look into the properties of Cope-Douglas production function. The first property is that Cope-Douglas production function can be used to derive the law of returns to scale. We know that in the long run all the factors are variable. So when all these variable factors are increased in the same proportion, the total output increases at an increasing, diminishing or constant rate. This is called as a law of returns to scale. The Cope-Douglas production function we know it is represented as Q is equal to AL alpha K raised to beta. Now if we multiply this equation with a constant K, then we get the equation Q star is equal to A K L the whole raised to alpha K K the whole raised to beta. Now opening the brackets and factoring out K we get Q star is equal to A K raised to alpha K raised to beta multiplied by L raised to alpha K raised to beta. Now here we get K raised to alpha and K raised to beta in a multiplicative form. So adding its exponents we get Q star is equal to A K raised to alpha plus beta multiplied by L raised to alpha K raised to beta. Now this can again be simplified and written as Q star is equal to K raised to alpha plus beta multiplied by AL alpha K beta. If we know the values of alpha and beta and if we substitute it onto this equation and if we get alpha plus beta greater than 1 then the production function implies an increasing returns to scale. If alpha plus beta is equal to 1 then the production function gives constant returns to scale and if alpha plus beta is less than 1 then the production function gives decreasing returns to scale. Now the second property is to find out the average product of the factors from Cope-Douglas production function. The average product of labor is obtained by dividing the total output with respect to the number of units of labor. So the equation is Q by L. So here if we divide the Cope-Douglas production function with respect to labor we get AL alpha K raised to 1 minus alpha divided by L. Here instead of beta we are using 1 minus alpha. Now the L in the denominator is 
actually L raised to 1. So bringing this L raised to 1 onto the numerator, we get A L alpha L raised to minus 1 K raised to 1 minus alpha. Solving this, we get A L alpha minus 1 K raised to 1 minus alpha. Now rewriting this, we get A L minus 1 plus alpha K raised to 1 minus alpha. Now bringing this L raised to minus 1 plus alpha back to the denominator, we get A K raised to 1 minus alpha divided by L raised to 1 minus alpha. Now we can again simplify and write it as A multiplied by K by L the whole raised to 1 minus alpha. Similarly, we can find out the average product of capital by dividing the Cope Douglas production function with number of units of capital and we get average product of capital as A multiplied by L by K the whole raised to alpha. The third property is to find out the marginal product of factors from Cope Douglas production function. So the marginal product of labor is obtained by finding the derivative of the Cope Douglas production function with respect to labor. So we get MPL is equal to del Q by del L. So differentiating the Cope Douglas production function with respect to labor, we get A alpha L raised to alpha minus 1 K raised to 1 minus alpha. That is we have used the power rule in the case of of labor. Now solving this we get A alpha L raised to minus 1 plus alpha K raised to 1 minus alpha. Now bringing L raised to minus 1 plus alpha back to the denominator we get A alpha K raised to 1 minus alpha divided by L raised to 1 minus alpha. This can be written as A alpha multiplied by K by L the whole raised to 1 minus alpha. Similarly the marginal product of capital can be found out by differentiating the Cope Douglas production function with respect to K. And we get MPK is equal to 1 minus alpha A multiplied by L by K the whole raised to alpha. The marginal product of labor and capital can also be found out in a much simpler way. That is by differentiating the Cope Douglas production function with respect to labor. We get A alpha L raised to alpha minus 1 K raised to 1 minus alpha. Now if we split out this L raised to alpha minus 1. We get A alpha L raised to alpha L raised to minus 1 K raised to 1 minus alpha. And if we bring this L raised to minus 1 down as denominator then we get alpha A L raised to alpha K raised to 1 minus alpha the whole divided by L. Now we know A L raised to alpha K raised to 1 minus alpha is nothing but Q. So this can be rewritten as alpha multiplied by Q by L. Similarly we can find out the marginal productivity of capital by differentiating the Cope Douglas production function with respect to K and then splitting the K factor that is we get A L raised to alpha 1 minus alpha k raised to 1 minus alpha minus 1. That is we have used the power rule for the factor input capital here. Now splitting this term we get a l alpha 1 minus alpha k raised to 1 minus alpha k raised to minus 1. Now bringing this k raised to minus 1 down to the denominator we get 1 minus alpha a l alpha k raised to 1 minus alpha divided by k. Now this is nothing but 1 minus alpha multiplied by q by k. The fourth property is the values of alpha and beta are the output elasticities of labor and capital respectively. So the output elasticity of labor shows the percentage change in the output with respect to percentage change in the number of laborers. This can be represented as delta q by delta l into l by q. We have already derived the marginal productivity of labor that is del q by del l is equal to alpha multiplied by q by by L. Now substituting this equation we get alpha Q by L multiplied by L by Q. Here Q and Q and L and L will get cancelled out and we get alpha as the final answer. So this shows that the output elasticity of labor is alpha. Similarly we can find out the output elasticity of capital which is the percentage change in output by percentage change in the number of capital represented as del Q by del K multiplied by K by Q. We have derived the marginal productivity of capital which is del Q by del K is equal to 1 minus alpha multiplied by Q by K. Substituting this onto this equation, we get 1 minus alpha multiplied by Q by K multiplied by K by Q. Again, Q and Q and K and K will get cancelled out and we get 1 minus alpha which is also equal to beta which is the output elasticity of capital.
The next property is using Euler's theorem to prove that Cope Douglas production function shows a constant returns to scale. Euler's theorem states that if each factor inputs are paid rewards or payments equal to their marginal productivity, then the total product will get exhausted. And this is true for a production function which implies constant returns to scale. And this is represented as Q is equal to MPL multiplied by L plus MPK multiplied by K. Now this can also be written as Q is equal to del q by del l multiplied by l plus del q by del k multiplied by k. Substituting the Cope Douglas production function onto the Euler's theorem, we get q is equal to del al alpha k raised to beta by del l multiplied by l plus del al alpha k raised to beta by del k multiplied by k. Differentiating these terms with respect to l and k, we get a alpha l raised to alpha minus 1 k raised to beta multiplied by l plus al alpha beta k k raised to beta minus 1 multiplied by k. Now solving this, we get a alpha l raised to alpha minus 1 plus 1 multiplied by k raised to beta plus a l alpha beta k raised to beta minus 1 plus 1. That is, this l here represents l raised to 1. So that is solved as l raised to alpha minus 1 plus 1. Similarly for k as well. Now here, minus 1 and plus 1 will get cancelled out and we get q is equal to alpha a l alpha k beta plus b beta al alpha k beta. This can be again solved and written as q is equal to alpha plus beta multiplied by al alpha k raised to beta. Al alpha k raised to beta is q itself. So this can be written as q is equal to alpha plus beta multiplied by q. So this shows that when alpha plus beta is equal to 1, q is equal to q. That is, when all the factor inputs are paid rewards equal to their marginal products, the total output will get exhausted. And since alpha plus beta is equal to 1, this production function clearly implies constant returns to scale. If you like the video, do subscribe to my channel and share the video to maximum. Thank you.